The hard part of the character makeup is I'm changing someone into the another person. Anyone can point out what's wrong with it without knowing what's wrong with it. So that's the tough part. My name is Kazuhiro. I am a prosthetic designer. If an actor wants to change their look to portray a character more than like a beauty makeup can do, that's when I, I will come into the set. I started as a special effects makeup artist. In the 2012, I got sick of the film industry and I left the film industry and started the fine art. Then I came back to the film industry again. When I was in high school, I contacted Dick Smith who is the Amadeus and the Godfather. I learned from him and I started in Japan. I worked with uh, Akira Kurosawa. I didn't like the situation in Japan because they don't have enough time and budget. So I decided to move to the uh, United States. I worked on a uh, Men in Black, Grinch, Click, Nobit. Uh, I was nominated for the Oscar. And recently I worked on a Darkest Hour and Bombshell. And I got Oscar for both movies. To do a character makeup, I will need to know anatomy and also makeup technique and the sculpting and also hair work. I started to use a computer and also photographing. Recently, computer technology is so advanced. Uh, we can combine prosthetic makeup with a computer and we can do something that we couldn't do in like 10 years ago. After I finished Mindhunter, Charis contacted me about the project because Charis was a producer of Mindhunter too. Charis convinced me to be on set every day because it was really tricky makeup because uh, especially I got applying eyelids, such a delicate area, moving all the time and such a delicate thin skin and if it's applied wrong way, it will affect the next day. So Megan Kelly has a heavier eyelid compared to Charis. So I had to change the eyelids on Charisse and also nostril size. Megan Kelly has a bigger nostril. The first thing I did was took an impression of inside of her nostril. That form, I scanned it and put in a computer program and I made this nose flag. So on set, I can put this, you can see like one side is bigger because I, I put on this side. This is a, uh, head cast of Charis. I can use the same color clay and uh, build the form onto it. We take an impression of the actor's face with the silicone and then silicone is a flexible material. Uh, we put the plaster bandage on top of it to reinforce the uh, flexibility. During th that time, actor will be breathing only through their nostril. The whole process will take about 25 minutes and then in that impression mode, we pour resin and make a mold of it. And in that mode, we pour plaster and make this copy. This is a printout of Charisse's face. When we do a physical life cast, the weight of the material pull down the face a little bit because the face is so soft. And uh, if we put the heavy stuff on it, it would distort the face. And the great thing about the scan, it won't, the, nothing touches it. So uh, that's why we can uh, make an eye open or with expression and, uh, and then from that data we print this out. When they act, they really have to believe in the, how capable they are and what they can do. Megan Kelly is really famous and Charisse is also very famous and the audience knows what they look like. It was very important to convince audience and also help Charisse to be really immersed into the character and uh, portray Megan Kelly. Charis makeup took like a two hours and a half. Roger has like a bulldog-ish cheek and a big neck. We kind of concluded like it would be like a hybrid, not exactly like a Roger. Because you know, like a great actor, when you shoot a close-up, they do a lot of subtle movement around the eyes. I didn't want to cover that thing. So, and what I did was uh, I changed the hairline. Roger's hairline was much farther back and uh, more like a round forehead. John's hairline is almost like a triangle. 
we shaved the hairline to mimic Roger's hairline. I gave him a nose and the cheek piece and the neck and the yellows because uh, Roger had really big yellows. John didn't believe in prosthetic makeup. He had a bad experience in the past. When we had the meeting first time, he brought that plumper, that kind of device put in the mouth to make his cheek bigger. The issue with the plumper is always look like a plant actor has a plumper because there's a distance here. And he said, oh, this is my walk, I use it on the crown. <laughs> okay. okay, well, and I told him, oh, no, let me, let me do. He was really skeptical. As soon as I put the nose on him, he looked at in the mirror and he started to say, wow, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm done and I told him, I'm not, I'm not done yet. <laughs> and he was really into it after that test makeup. And the John is a little over two hours. Nicole Kidman was portraying Gretchen Carson. Jay told me that she doesn't have to be exactly like Gretchen, but just to give a sense of it. In like an essence of it. Originally, I sculpted it with a nose and chin and the cheeks because uh, Gretchen has a rounder face, but uh, Nicole requested to get rid of that. So we end up putting a nose and the chin. That was it. Nicole was about two hours. Uh, I think it was 2015, uh, Gary Oldman emailed me. He really wanted me to work on this film and he told me that if I cannot walk on, he won't take the job. He had big cheek pieces, the nose tip and chin and the neck. And we shaved his head because I had a discussion with uh, Gary. Do you want to shave it and to make the makeup time shorter or you want to sit longer? And so his answer was, oh, okay, let's shave it. There's a live cast. This is uh, uh, Gary. Gary Oldman. Most of the time it's impossible to make one person look exactly like the other person because the proportion of the face or proportion of the face is different. When I sculpt a uh, face on a live cast, it's very important to know how the actor moves their face and we also have to know where to end a uh, sculpture. Basically this is a silicone has a skin on top of it. We would apply this with a medical adhesive and we will melt the edge. We call this part as a flashing. Then we start to paint the skin tone on top of it. Sometimes blend into actor's skin or change the whole color. Human skin tone, it's changing all the time. If they are sitting on a chair, they are not moving at all. Skin tend to be pale. And once they stand up and start to walk, blood circulation start to happen, so skin tone get warmer. We have to kind of compensate that change, so there won't be a too much of a difference. It took, uh, I believe it was like less than three hours. Mindhunter was, uh, it came to me right after I finished Darkest Hour. Actor for Charles Manson was Damon Harriman, and uh, he was uh, Charles Manson in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He had a great face for that character, but the big difference was uh, eyelids. Charles Manson has a more like a deep socketed eyes. He had a hoop beard and a long hair. I gave him a uh, eyebrow cover because I had to change the shape of his eyebrow. At first I made a eyelid piece kind of uh, bring the eyelid into his eye socket, but he felt that is kind of uncomfortable. So at the end what I did was I glued his eyelid up and put the forehead piece on top of it. We created the hair, hair piece and cut the hairline off from a lace piece. But the problem is uh, those lace piece once glued on the skin, it's kind of toughen up the skin. So when actors smile or change expression, it buckles up and make a wrinkles. What we do is cut the hairline off from a hair piece and lay a single hair on the hairline with a glue. It took about three hours. David Barkowitz, Oliver Cooper was the actor. I was asked to be a part of the casting and to pick the right face. That was a really tricky because David Barkowitz has a really interesting face. Oliver's face, he had eyebrow cover because David Barkowitz has a unibrow and the nose 
and upper lip and lower lip, chin, whole cheek, and the neck. He also had the body suits. David Buck was a kind of stocky, like a, almost like a football player-ish body shape. So we had to change the whole shoulder too. Across the four hours. And the getting Oscar is, it will put, put the seal on you, like, okay, okay, ask this guy. So it will be all good, you know. So that, that was great. After that, uh, the like old project came to me was the projects I wanted to work on.